I don't know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what it is. But it just seems like every single time I teach, I always come to this problem or I come to division and this is where students stop. They're like, ah, I'm done. So let's just look at all the different ways that we can solve and then we'll go to this one. <clears throat> let's say I had x plus seven equals 12. Well, what would we do on both sides? Sorry, I dropped my cap. What would we do on both sides? We would subtract by seven, right? Got it. What if I said x minus seven equals 12? What would we do here? We would add seven, right? Good. What if we had seven times x equals 12? Well, then we'd divide by seven, right? So what do you think we're gonna do when we have x divided by seven? We have to use the inverse operations. The operations we've talked about, there's only so many. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. What is x over seven mean? That means we're using division. So to undo division, we have to use multiplication. So I'm gonna multiply a seven on both sides. Now when you multiply by seven, okay, now you produce a seven as a numerator and a seven in a denominator. So you have seven divided by seven. Make sure, make sure I multiplied seven on both sides by the multiplication property of equality, just to make sure. But then you have seven divided by seven, which is equal to one. So I have one times x, which equals 12 times seven, which equals 84. All right, so I did this to isolate my variable, to unuse my inverse operations, then I multiplied seven on both sides by using a multiplication property of equality to produce equivalent equations. Any variable multiplied by one is just gonna be your variable. So I have x equals 84, which is an equivalent equation to my original problem. So there we go, that is the solution that makes my equation true. Thank you.